in his first season as twin skipper. Paul Molitor got everyone excited about baseball again in Minnesota, accumulating 83 wins and narrowly missing the playoffs. So how can they build upon the success and strides they made a year ago moving forward into next year? Red Bollinger is a Twins beat writer for MLB.com and he stopped by on Friday to give me some insight on the Twins' off-season plans. We started our discussion by discussing the impact that longtime twin, Tory Hunter, who recently announced his retirement, had on the game of baseball and on the organization. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have a big impact. I mean, this guy had a great career. You know, played with the Twins most of his career, obviously played with the Angels and Tigers as well. Um, but he's one of the more beloved Twins in, in franchise history. Uh, you know, Torrey was a great player, several-time All-Star, you know, multiple gold gloves. Uh, you know, great center fielder, especially early in his career, uh, but also had the power, too. So that power-speed combo is so rare. But more than anything off the field, um, he's always been such a, you know, good, good guy with the media. Um, you know, he's just been a, an ambassador for the game. Um, you know, kind of always willing to speak his mind, and it's gotten him in some trouble here and there, and he knows that, <laughs> kind of saying some stuff, maybe uh, speaking his mind a little bit. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, you know, he is who he is, and he's <clears throat> an easy person to deal with from the media. Uh, I think just the impact he's made in the community, he's always been really big on, you know, community projects and helping kids from the inner city. They're coming from uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Um, so his foundation is a big thing. So I think he's going to be, a, you know, a, a, probably a – a great TV person, I'm guessing, and you know, unless he wants to go into a front office or even a coaching role. Um, but I think he'd probably be great on TV because he is a bright guy in terms of knowing so much about the game. He's been around the game his whole life and for so long. Um, but I, I just think, that, yeah, he's a guy that baseball, we're going to see him around a lot because I think he's going to be a big part of baseball going forward. Just because he's retired, I think we're still going to see him there probably on TV and those type of things. Um, but, yeah, a great player and a player of the Twins fans – Definitely love, and a guy that's probably likely to be uh, in the Twins Hall of Fame, if not even have his number retired. Now, when we look at the current Twins team on the field, they won 20 and 7 in the month of May, which was a big catalyst for their 83 win season. But what, what do you think is the key to consistency for the Twins this season? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the thing with the Twins, right? Last year was they had that slow start, going 1 and 7. To open the year, had a rough April, and then boom, in May, turned it around, winning 20 games in a month for the first time since 1991. So that kind of, you're right, that kind of propped up the whole season for them. Um, obviously, all the wins in every month count the same. You know, the win in May is the same as a win in uh, September. Um, but you're right, it was kind of just that one month that kind of carried them. So I think they like to get a little more consistent there. I think probably both on both sides of the ball. I mean, you look at the overall numbers for the Twins. I think they were 13th in the majors in runs scored and 19th in the RA. So I think they need to get better all around in that sense. I think they need to get more consistency from their starting pitchers, you know. And the offense, too. The offense needs to pick it up a little bit. Uh, you know, their on-base percentage and everything else was down last year compared to the previous year. <clears throat> but I think they have so many young players. Maybe last year kind of getting a taste. <clears throat> They'll be better next year for it, you know, learning kind of what they were going, you know, going through last year. Um, but, yeah, I think more than anything, maybe the starting pitching needs to kind of really – they can kind of avoid some of the injuries they dealt with last year, too. That should help. Um, but more than anything, just those younger guys, once they kind of keep continue to get developed, I think they'll probably be better because of that. Now, M Miguel Santos had to have uh, Tommy John surgery, but he did play 80 games uh, as a rookie during his rookie season. So what do you think his full-time presence in the Twins lineup will mean for Minnesota this year? Yeah, Miguel Sano had a great rookie year, you know, finishing third in the AL uh, balloting for rookie of the year. Uh, you know, it was a big impact back for the Twins in those 80 games, hitting 18 homers and 17 doubles, uh, which is impressive considering he did miss the previous season uh, to Tommy John surgery as a third baseman. Uh, and, you know, and also he also served mostly as a DH. I think all but eight or nine of those games he was a DH. Um, so it's pretty impressive he's able to jump right in there as a DH, become that impact bat for the Twins. He was a cleanup hitter most of the season after being called up on July 2nd. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think going forward he should have that power. The big question now should be, you know, where's he going to play? Is he going to be in the outfield now? The Twins right now, uh, you know, made a bid on a, a guy from Korea, uh, Park, who the Twins, you know, believe will probably be their everyday designated hitter next year if they sign him. 
a uh, big power bat from Korea. So in that sense, if they want to move Sano, who's only 22 years old, off of DH, so you got to figure he's probably going to maybe move to the outfield unless they decide to trade Trevor Plouffe uh, to kind of make room for Sano. Uh, but definitely a good showing from him in his first year to be able to bounce right back after missing a full season for Tommy John and then also to be able to do that as a DH. So it's a great sign for the Twins. He's got to cut down on the strikeouts. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, his batting eye, he draws a lot of walks. That power is going to be there. Uh, so you got to figure he's going to anchor that lineup for years to come. And finally, Rhett, why should people around baseball and Twins fans in particular be excited about Twins uh, base, baseball going into this year and beyond? Well, I think the big thing was this previous season was so unexpected. I think most people kind of saw the Twins struggling again, maybe, you know, maybe even another 90-loss season um, after, you know, losing at least 90 games for four straight years. Uh, so it was one of those things where people kind of didn't really expect what they did, and for them to actually have a winning record for the first time since 2010, and for them not to be eliminated until the second to last day of the season, uh, I thought was, you know, something that kind of surprised people. Um, so I think it's kind of, they're kind of ahead of schedule in a sense. They weren't supposed to be this good, and the fact that they were this good this season kind of bodes well for the future because everyone figured they were going to get good pretty soon because they've had such a top farm system for so long now. But the fact that they were kind of maybe a year ahead of uh, the curve here, kind of like the Astros, same kind of thing where no one really saw them taking that big of a step last year. Um, but for both franchises, a, you know, a good sign to take that initial step here. Twins get to 83 wins. They can build on that. Um, they've got so many young guys. Like we talked about Miguel Sano, Eddie Rosario, you know, Byron Buxton, even Tyler Duffy had a, a great showing last year late in the season as a starting pitcher. Jose Barrios isn't even here yet. So they have a lot of pieces. They have some depth. Um, curious to see what they kind of do this offseason with some of these guys, maybe Trevor Plouffe, if they were to trade him or, or just keep him and move Sano to the outfield. But uh, they're a young team. They're fun. They're aggressive. Uh, they're going to see some power from Sano. You're going to see some great base running and defense from guys like Rosario and Buxton. Dozier, Brian Dozier and Trevor Plouffe have both developed into good players. Uh, you know, and I'm curious to see how this John Ryan Murphy does behind the plate. So, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of reason for optimism for the Twins, uh, not just this season, but beyond, because they still have a top farm system, and now we finally see some results on the field. So once you can kind of combine those two together, uh, the Twins should be one of the better teams in the American League. Going forward, we'll see about next year. Like we said, that the Royals are still uh, the team to beat, and a lot of, uh, you know, kind of interesting teams in the division uh, that had high hopes last year that maybe didn't, you know, happen, but... Uh, yeah, I think the Twins are going to be uh, definitely in that mix next season. And beyond that, they should be a, a very good team in the American League.